Hi, my name is Steve. Um, I go by Jumps4 on HobbyMachinist.com. I'd like to uh, try to do a little course on how I actually do my machining and what software I do and use in CNC. Um, I'm not a cinematographer, or an actor, or a teacher, or an instructor. I'm not college educated. I just like to show how I do it. Um, the softwares I use, hopefully it can help somebody. I've spent very little money on anything that I use here. And so for just a real quick how-to, I want to do just a generic draw part, take it into um, actual D2NC, change that into G-code, and then show um, Mach 3. Um, the actual part in Mach 3. So I don't have any actual measurements, but just generically off the top of my head, I'd like to start out by drawing a uh, something similar to a stepper motor mount. I'm just going to draw a square box. I selected the box and drew it. I'm not adding any me measurements here. I'm not telling it where as far as X and Y it's located on the screen. I really don't care for my use. Um, let's say I pre-measured the bolt hole pattern, the four bolts that hold the stepper motor on. So I'm, I'm going to need a box, uh, um, four bolt holes for that, a center um, alignment hole uh, for the actual hub on the front of the motor, and then a center hole in it for the actual shaft for the motor to go through. I make those normally the size a little bit bigger than the actual uh, shaft coupling so that if I take the motor off I can take it off with the coupling. Um, like I said I'm not using actual dimensions so for this first box I'm just going to say it's three inches by three inches and you have to hit enter. Okay and then let's say my bolt hole pattern is a quarter of an inch in um, so for to locate these bolt holes, um, there um, I don't actually have the CNC drill the holes. It's faster to just go ahead and um, use the drawing to locate them, and then use the uh, the milling machine as uh, the drill press function of it. But I need them on the picture here to actually uh, give some clarification as to where they go in the actual X Y coordinates of them. So. Uh, let's say they're a quarter of an inch in, um, which would, it's easier for me to just draw another square, drop it on the screen, and say that this one is two and a half, whoops, 2.5 by 2.5, hit enter again, and then if I grab this box and move it around, if you look in the center of the screen, you'll see it's snap to center with a little small blue box. I draw that second square and that now gives me the four alignment points for my actual bolt holes. Um, my bolt holes would be a number seven drill to tap in quarter 20 for a, a NEMA 23. I'm not really worried about that. I'm just looking for an actual point to uh, uh, center drill these holes. So I just draw a circle and let's uh, put it on the screen here. and I'm just going to, up at the top, say the actual, I'm in diameter mode, so I'm going to say they're quarter inch, which is too big to tap, but, and hit enter. Okay, once I have this, I can duplicate that circle by holding the control key and hitting D three times, and it made three more copies of it. I can then take this, and it will snap to the blue square and align with each corner as to the size and placing of the four bolt holes. Like I said, I'm no cinematographer here, so bear with me. I'm just trying to explain how I do things. Uh, let's say my coupler is um, about an inch in diameter. So I want to draw a circle in the center. If you see the square dot pop up in the center, I'm going to put a one inch circle in the center here. I'm just going to drop the circle and then I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to make it one point, uh, let's make it an inch and an eight. I hit an error. 
I'm just going to save this as an untitled and restart. I don't know why I hit an error. It's probably because I have Mach 3, D2, and C, and E machine shop opened all at the same time. But I just restarted the software. Okay. I'm going to reselect this circle. I'm going to come up to the top and say its diameter is 1.125. Make it an inch and an eighth so the coupling fits through it. Hit enter. Okay. Then I have a hub on, uh, on the front of the stepper motor that actually aligns it centered to this plate and bolt pattern. And I don't know what it is right off the top of my head, but uh, let's, let's say that it's uh, two and a quarter. So I'm just going to draw another circle. I blew out of it that time. Uh, let's say that this one here is two and a quarter, so I'm just going to type two point two five oh and hit enter okay so now I have my basic drawing what I need to do here is this box that I use for alignment I'm just going to select it with the left mouse button and hit delete um, there's a radius on the actual mount for the motor so I may I want to put a radius on this so I'll go to the top and select line corner and let's say it has a, a a uh, quarter inch radius on it. Right here I would select a round and then 0.250 and then an outside corners and click OK so it radiuses all the corners around the bolt holes for me. Okay now I can save this. I'm just going to save it as untitled. First thing though to get a DXF file in eMachine Shop you have to save your file in actual eMachine Shop format. Then once you've saved the file, you can export it as a DXF file and you can select it from the down, drop down list. I'm going to save it as untitled and export it. It already exists, I'm just rewriting over the top of it. So now I can go ahead and drop my, uh, my drawing out of sight and go to D2NC. You can get in D2 and C right directly from Mach 3. Uh, that's all I needed with that drawing. As far as D2 and C is concerned, it will locate it where you tell it to. You don't have to worry about where you actually drew that on the screen, just the actual dimensions. You don't have to worry about any far as uh, Z um, thicknesses on anything on the parts. You're, it's not what I'm doing here is not making a full set of plans. I'm drawing a part to machine. Uh, in, in D2 and C, I'll now select CAD. I'm going to import a DXF file, which is called Untitled. It opens up on the screen. I'm going to just click Next, because just to select it, and it's going to ask me how I wish to align this. Do I want to uh, center it on my machine or do I want to use the bottom left corner, top right corner, where I want X and Y zero zero to be. In this case I'm going to use bottom left so it aligns the part to the bottom left. Okay, the next thing you want to set is an actual path. So I'm going to go to offset, I'm going to select a tool diameter. Now just for demonstration you can select a different tool for each function and uh, use, use a different tool size for each particular function determining on what you want to do here. But since I just want to make this part real quick and I'm going to drill the holes with a drill press, um, from eMachine Shop I would select the whole thing, drop it down to the lower left corner as I did here, and then each one of these bolt holes, I would just click on them and write down its XY coordinate so that while it's in the mill, I can go to the manual data entry and tell it X go to that point, Y go to that point, and then just take and drill that hole. Uh, for, for actually making the rest of this, I want to put a big cutter in the machine and just cut the thing out. So I'm going to use, uh, let's put a three-quarter inch cutter in here. And 
and first thing I want to do is select this inside hole. I want to offset it to the inside. I got a three quarter cutter. I'm going to offset it to the inside and click offset. And you'll see its size change on the screen. Next I want to click on the next pocket. Now this doesn't go full depth. This just is about an eighth of an inch deep for the motor to set down into. Once again I want to do it on the inside and I just click the offset and it rechanges it. Now this outside edge will be my final machining function and that will be on the outside. I'm going to use the same cutter and I'll click offset. So you can see it enlarged to compensate for uh, the cutter diameter. Now I'll go to path, click on contour, click on local shape and that will bring everything into the screen. I'm going to select none of these and I'm going to take each one as an individual function. I'm going to pick first this shallow pocket. I'm going to move it into the selection. It wants to know its total depth below zero. Um, you don't have to top, type negative here. I'm just going to put point one two five, make it an eighth of an inch deep. I'm going to take it out at point zero three, let's say, thirty thousandths per step. Um, it already knows the cutter diameter. It automatically calculates the feeds and speeds. If you go into constraints, I'm sorry I missed this. If you go into constraints before you draw your part, you can tell it with what material you're working. And it will give you a basic, it, actually it's a really safe speed and feed. Obviously this is set up right now for steel because you can see it's on a, a pretty slow speed. I'm going to close this. No, I'm not. I'm just going to go ahead with what it is. We're not going to worry about feeds and speeds. Now I have some other selections I can make here. I can ramp this cut and I can also do tabs. Uh, I normally ramp. It gives a smoother finish. Uh, it doesn't take any more time. And if I click on this blue button, it will calculate it for me. Sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it don't. Uh, you just have to see what your ramp angle is. This is what the maximum length is, then here is what it calculated. Always check it because sometimes it, it will be over that amount and give you an error. If it's under it, I don't need to ramp for four, four inches. So I'm just going to tell it uh, to ramp for 2.5. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, it just It's how fast it's going to actually plunge the cutter down into the material. I'm going to click Add and Close. It put the first machine um, process right here. Okay, this is going to go back to contour. Once again, click local shape, click none. Then I'm going to collect this, select this center hole. I'm going to move it now. Now my material is a half inch thick, so I'm going to say point five one zero. Oh. So I go completely through it. And once again, I'm going to take thirty thousandths depth to cut. Uh, it will automatically calculate everything. I'll let it calculate um, the plunge. I'll add and close. So there's my second function. My third one here, my material once again is a half inch thick, so it's going to be 0.510 to go through it. I'm going to do 30 thousandths again. Uh, oops, I made a mistake here, and if you ever notice that you don't see ramp, it's because I did not pick local shape. I'm going to go back, click local shape, none, select the outside now, and then move that in. I do it all the time. As soon as you don't see the ramping, you know you got a problem. I didn't lose anything here. Go to ramping, uh, have it calculate. It's going to do it in 6 inches instead of 13. Add and close. Okay, so we have our three machine functions. First thing I'm going to do is pocket out that hole um, for, for the center, uh, the mount face on the motor. Second, I'm going to go completely through. Now this is going to start from zero. In reality, it's going to make an eighth of an inch of wasted motion going down until it reaches the top of the material if that was a pocket. But I didn't do it as a pocket on this first machining function. I just uh, because the cutter is three-quarter inch wide, uh, 
you can actually set it to a negative amount to start to cut below zero if you did it as a pocket and all the material is gone. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to pick all three of these. At this point in time, I can change the order of what I want to do these, but this is fine. I'll take out the motor face mount, I'll take out the center hole for the coupling, and then I'll cut the actual part out. So right now I've selected all three and I'll go ahead and generate the G code. Okay. Uh, whenever you run Mach 3, have nothing else on the computer running. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm now into Mach 3. I could get into D2NC where I was just at, right from Mach 3 right here to select it and go ahead and generate it here. I did it the other way just so you could see it. I'm going to load a G, G code, the one I just made, and it was called Untitled. Uh, if you look here, it says Tap Files. You won't see, the, we didn't name that. It comes over to Mach 3 as D2NC.Tap. You can rename it yourself, but here you can actually see the part, and you can go ahead and run it. I'm going to go offline here, hit reset, and reset the machine, and hit cycle start, and the first thing it's going to ask you is for tool change. Now in D2NC, every time it goes from doing a a machining function, it will say tool change even if it's using the same tool. You can edit those out if you want everything to go smoother or you can just hit enter again and it goes on with the next function. So here it's going to go ahead and start cutting it and as you can see it's it's going to start machining the part. That's, that's it for the first one. Uh, I'm going to come back and just do a lot more in depth on eMachine Shop. It's so much easier than most of the CAD programs I've used because I don't have to actually type in the X, Y coordinates, radiuses, and all the rest of that to draw anything. You can draw complex parts uh, by a series of squares and circles and then deleting out the sections you don't want. It's, it's a lot easier, but I'm just doing this as kind of a first one to give you an idea how quickly you can go from just an idea to machining a part. Thank you.